It's time for revival. Let me say that again. It's time for revival. It's time to return to the Bible. It is time for a new, for a new great awakening. Hallelujah. It is time for a moving of God. It is time for the moving and the operation of the Holy Ghost to return to the churches. It is a time for the visitation of God. I want to say to every one of y'all watching it over the course of this weekend, and some of y'all be watching parts of this message on Friday, Good Friday, some on Saturday, and some on Resurrection Sunday. Up from the grave he arose <laughs> with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose the victor or a dark domain. <laughs> and so I want to wish everybody, if it's Good Friday when you're watching, happy Good Friday, happy Saturday, happy Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And that is why we are here. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest fact of ancient history. He is alive. And because... He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know, I know, I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. He's not in the grave. Muhammad died and is buried. Buddha died and was buried. St. Peter and the Virgin Mary died and were buried. Every Pope that has ever lived died and was buried. But there was one. There was one. There was one. There is one. His name is Jesus Christ. And he conquered the grave. He conquered death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And because he is risen, so we can also have our resurrection when he comes in the cloud of glory. The purpose of what they're calling World War III, the Third World War, the purpose of all that's going on. <laughs> it's not Russia and Afghanistan and all this stuff and Putin and Zelensky. That's all a diversion. The purpose What's really happening is Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I'm going to shout it from the housetops. I'm going to shout it at the Russians. I'm going to shout it at the Chinese. I'm going to shout it at the Americans. I'm going to shout it to Israel and Europe and Africa and Australia and Mexico and the islands of the sea. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The trumpet of God is about to sound. Are you? ready for judgment day are you living right watching day and night and keeping your record right the great is falling away the great apostasy the great new spiritual dark age that's all around us is a diversion oh that's what's happening but that's not what really is going on what is really going on is the greatest move of god in the history of the world. The tribulation saints are coming. Listen, the saints are coming. I said the saints are coming. I said the saints are coming from every nation, kindred, tongue, tongue, tribe, language, and people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. The saints are coming. The tribulation saints are coming. The kingdom of God is coming. The gospel is being preached to every nation for a witness. And then the end shall come. I know it's dark. I know we're in a new spiritual dark age. I'm not blind. I can see the darkness.
some messages you have to study over and study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word day and night. Sometimes they're hard. You have to grind. You have to work. You have to pray, travail, intercede. God, what do you want me to say? God, how do you want me to say it? God, make me your vessel. God, work through me and speak through me. But sometimes, it's like taking candy from a baby. Oh, hallelujah. And today is one of those days. You know, it's hard to hit at major league pitching. I used to think I was a baseball player. Until I got hit in the eye. And then when a pitch would come on the inside, I'd be, ah! <laughs> Get out of the way! But you know, sometimes well, it's hard to hit major league pitching. It's coming in there 100 miles an hour. But every once in a while, a pitcher will throw a mistake. And he'll throw a frisbee in there. He'll throw a, a concrete mixer slider and he'll hang it about right there with nothing on it. And even a bad hitter like me, bang, bam. And today's message is like that. Today's message is a hanging curveball. Glory to God. Because it's so simple. And it's so sudden and it's so direct from the throne of God. Yeah, it's a spiritual dark age. It's the darkest time in the history of humanity. Violence fills the earth. It is a day of darkness. It is a day of deception. It is a day of doctrines of demons. It is a demonic day. It is a day of delusion. It is a day of devils. It is a day of spiritual declension. It is a day of diminishing values. It is a day of disappearing holiness. And we could go right on the line and be negative and sit back like I preached the other day and, you know, say gloom, despair, and agony on me. You know the hee-haw gospel. Frowning, sad, no joy. You can do that. The evidence shows you can do that. Somebody said it's all over. But somebody else said, <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Somebody else said, it's always darkest. Before the dawn. At midnight, Paul and Silas were in chains and chains. But the angel of the Lord came and delivered them. At midnight, at the darkest hour, when the doctor says your body is riddled with cancer and they put a vent down your throat with COVID. It's hard to repent on a vent. It's hard to repent on a vent at the darkest hour when you're broke, when your wallet is empty. When your wife says, I'm going to leave. When your husband says, I'm going to divorce. When your kids are on drugs. When you're riddled with pain, you want to pop pills. When you're so down and so depressed, you just want to drink. Jesus says, look up. Look to the author and the finisher of your faith because it's always darkest before the dawn. I want to begin today in the word of God, Psalm 16 verse 10 for thou will not leave my soul in hell neither well will thou suffer thy holy one he's the holy one he was the holy one he is the holy one he will always be the holy one the presence of god to see corruption and then verse 11 and get ready to shout are you wearing your shouting shoes are you wearing your shouting shoes take the shoes off your feet the place where we are standing is holy ground holy ground holy ground thou will show me the path of 
life, listen, in thy presence, in thy presence. And that's where you want to be. The presence of God in thy presence is fullness of joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory is at thy right hand. And listen, there are pleasures evermore. Woo! Hallelujah. It's not boring to serve Jesus. Every star, every planet, every sun, and every solar system was put there for you and me to enjoy. There are pleasures forevermore. Heaven will not be boring. There are pleasures forevermore. There are treasures forevermore. We will walk on streets of gold and he will wipe out every tear from our eyes. Woo! Hallelujah. We are destined for the throne of God. Partakers of the divine nature. Fill with all the fullness of God. My text today is Psalm 17. You have your Bible? Turn to Psalm 17. The Bible is the only holy book with a song book. Why? Because we're the only religion with something to sing about, something to shout about, something to dance about. Glory to God, something to say hallelujah. Glory to God about. Don't be depressed. Don't be down. Smile, Jesus is coming. I said, smile, Jesus is coming. I said, smile, hold on, endure to the end. Jesus is coming. That's the whole purpose of World War III, to show you that Jesus is coming. Hear the right, O Lord, attend to my cry. It's okay to cry. Give ear to my prayer. That goes not out of my feigned lips. Let thy sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved my heart. And I like this next phrase. And this is where my title is going to come from today. Thou hast visited me in the night. <laughs> I got to sit down. There, there's... There's a couple places in the Old Testament. Well, the word of the Lord says, the priest could not stand to minister. I know there's a lot of fake slain in the Holy Ghost and fake falling of the power and demonstrations for TV and demonstrations for money, but I'm not fake. I'm not about the money. I'm not, I'm not acting. I could barely stand up. The power and the presence of Almighty God is so strong. <laughs> Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. My title, if I can stand up, if I can quit staggering and start to stand. My title today is a visitation in the night. It was dark on Good Friday. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was hung there suspended on that tree. The only tree you should hug is Calvary. And he was suspended on the stipe and the pentibulum. A crown of thorns on his head, spikes in his hands and feet. 39 lashes from the lictor's lash, riveting his flesh, his blood pouring out. And the Bible said, he was hung there at 9 a.m., the time of the morning sacrifice, and he breathed his last, shouting, It is finished, with a triumphant voice at 3 p.m., the time of the evening sacrifice. The veil of the temple was ripped in two, signifying that the way to God was now open. The graves of those who had died 
in the faith were opened and paradise was emptied and the price had been paid. But the Bible says that it went dark. It went dark. So no one could actually see him die. It went dark. And that was emblematic and typical of the darkness of the crucifixion. It was dark on Good Friday. People say, Brother Mike, why do they call it Good Friday? It's a bad Friday. Jesus is dying. That's a bad thing. He was murdered. There was a conspiracy to kill him. Oh, look, he, he, he wasn't murdered. He gave his life. It, it was a sacrifice. He laid down his life willingly. No man took it from him. He laid it down. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. It was dark. It was dark as a type and a shadow. It was dark. But the reason we call it Good Friday is because our good heaven father gave his only begotten son listen to me if you ever listen to a preacher for God's soul of the world that he gave his son his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not have to die and go to hell but can be saved it was good Friday because on that Friday at Calvary's cruel cross of Golgotha, God gave his only begotten son. God gave his amazing grace. God gave his great gift. God gave his gospel to the world. And the dead came up out of that grave. And Jesus wouldn't stay in the grave. But up from the grave, he would arise in the resurrection power. We call it Good Friday. Because it gives you a good chance to go to heaven and miss hell. Billy Sunday was one of the greatest preachers who ever lived. And he had a sermon like this. And it was, it was dark on Friday. It was dark. Some of y'all are battling darkness right now. You're, you're bound by greed. You're bound by gambling. You're bound by covetousness and lust. You're bound by the sin of pornography, LGBTQ. You're being gripped by a divorce, lust, premarital sex, living together before marriage, and on and on and on, drinking, drugs, prescription pain kills, addiction. Every sin, habit, and bondage I can name, you're bound by it. And it's dark. But I came to this pulpit today not to give you the bad news and the negative. <laughs> I came to give you the greatest news you'll ever hear. The news from Good Friday. Good news. Good news. The price was paid. The penalty's been paid. The propitiation has been made. The propitiation has been made. And the provision has been given. Jesus died for those sins so you don't have to live in them anymore. The power of sin was broken on the cross and all you have to do is repent of it, be sorry for it, and believe in the cross as the object of your faith and you can be justified, sanctified, and glorified. Justified meaning just as if you've never done it and have the very righteousness of Almighty God himself being made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Stand and shout. Stand and shout. Woo! Wherever you are. When, when entertainers and singers and actors pull off something great, they drop the mic. They drop the mic. The mic drop. Bible drop. Hallelujah! Bible drop! Woo! Glory to God! <laughs> Woo! Glory to God! Thou has visited me in the night. Take your, hold your place there. We're going to come back to that. But I feel led by the Holy Ghost to go over to Isaiah chapter 61. I told you about good news. I came to preach good news here. Breaking news. Forget about the bad news in Ukraine. Forget about demon-possessed Putin. Forget about the inflation and the border crisis in Afghanistan and gas prices and all this kind of stuff. Forget about all that for a minute. 
and focus on the good news. Isaiah 61, verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I feel him right now. He's not an it. He's a he. He's a person. He's the third person of the divine Godhead. God the Holy Ghost. And he's on me to do what? To preach the good news. To preach good tidings to who? To the meek. To bind up the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted today? Is your heart broke? Do you have a broken heart? Come to Jesus. Alcohol cannot mend a broken heart. Only Jesus can mend a broken heart. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. Are you bound by drugs and drinking? Well, I proclaim liberty to you right now. Jesus sets you free at the cross. Repent and believe. Hallelujah. You don't need rehab from man. You don't need humanistic psychology on a couch. You need rehabilitation and regeneration from Almighty God. From the cross of Jesus Christ. The blood is what breaks every bondage. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The day of vengeance of our God. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Are you hurting today? Are you mourning? To give beauty for ashes. Joy for mourning. A garment of praise. For the spirit of holiness. Folks. I came to this pulpit today. To preach good news to the lost. To the sick. You don't have to be lost anymore. You don't have to be sick anymore. To the poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. To the captives, you don't have to be captive anymore. To the brokenhearted, you can have a healed heart. Hallelujah. Jesus is the life giver. I have come to preach good news to the poor, to heal broken hearts, to proclaim liberty and freedom to the captives, to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of Jubilee, to comfort the mourners. That is why I have come to this pulpit today, and that is why Jesus came. Somebody said, why did Jesus come? Right here. Here's the reason. To destroy the works of the devil. To fulfill all righteousness. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus came. And this that I'm preaching is the ministry of Jesus. And it is the real gospel of Jesus Christ setting the captives free. The gospel is a proclamation of fact. It's not fiction. It's not fairy tale. It's not fraud. It's not fantasy. It is a proclamation of fact. It is a statement of reality. It is an announcement of truth. It is a demonstration of power. In this little text here, we see the anointing, the announcing, the accepting, the appointing, and the ashing. The only answer to life, the only answer to the situations and problems and circumstances and tests and trials and temptations and tribulations that you're going through right now is the presence of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Go back a chapter to Isaiah chapter 60 and I want to give you some prophetic truth that goes hand in hand with my message today. I think this is one of the prettiest statements, not only in the book of Isaiah, but in all the word of God. The Spirit of the Lord says through Isaiah, you know, the men were simply used. Men were born along by the Holy Spirit. Men didn't write the Bible. God, the Holy Spirit, wrote the Bible, and he used, and he anointed, and he gifted men to do it. He worked through the men. And so the Holy Spirit says in Isaiah 60, verse 1, and please pay attention. Please expand your attention span. Please expand and enlarge your attention span and quit multitasking and focus like a laser on the Word of God. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Jesus is the light of the world. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now that's positive, that's encouraging, that's uplifting. But God's word not only gives the positive, it gives the negative, and then you can, you're sort of caught somewhere in between, then you can choose what dimension of reality you're going to dwell in. He says, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now that's negative. That's a terrible prophecy. But that's sadly where we are right now. Genesis 6 said in the days of Noah, every thought of man was only evil continually. And violence filled the earth. That's why God drowned the whole wide world. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it's going to be right before I come again. Well, the days of Noah 
are here again. Gun violence. We just saw somebody shoot up the subway in New York City. I mean, these things have become so common. School shootings and workplace shootings and concert shootings and nightclub shootings and cafe shootings. And it's common. It's all around us. The, the darkness, uh, the drugs, the drinking, the gambling, the sex, the porn, the darkness shall cover the earth. It has happened, Paul said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. And gross darkness, the people. That's the, that's the negative. That's the reality. We can't deny reality. This is not Christian science. It's not Scientology. This is not the word of faith. We're not denying reality like some cult. No, we're dealing with reality. But God has a higher reality. And with God, look at the next word. It says but, B-U-T. With God, there's always a but. I'm about to run. 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 Why? With God, there's always a but. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now Jesus said, when he was in the Olivet Discourse discussing the wars and rumors of wars like we're seeing in Ukraine right now with Putin and Russia. He said there will be pestilences in diverse places. Seven last plagues are coming. The God variant is coming. Godcron is coming. Billions are going to die. But in the midst of all that doom and all that gloom, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel, hallelujah, do you feel that? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached for a witness to every nation. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, the end shall come. So in the middle of this darkness, this spiritual dark age, the light of God is going to be poured out. The revelation of God, the rhema of God, the logos of God is going to be poured out as never before. And the greatest revival, the greatest revival, the greatest revival, the greatest move of God in the history of the world is at hand, saith the Lord. You know, when Jesus came, it was a dark period. The, there had not been a real prophet until John the Baptist in 400 years. Sin ruled the world. The Roman Empire had risen. In its idolatry, its images, its paganism, its heathenism. Despicable wick wickedness and darkness filled the earth. But into that darkness came the light of the world. <laughs> into that darkness, into that abyss, into that pit came Jesus, the light of the world. And the Lord says, as I came the first time as light in the darkness, so I shall come in thunder and with trumpet, saith God, the second time in power, in glory, in victory, and in triumph. Woo! Hallelujah, says the Lord God Almighty. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 19, verse 44. Skip ahead to the New Testament. Luke 19 and verse 44. I like Luke. I like it all. First Luke 18, 1. He spoke a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Somebody said, Brother Mike, why do you preach against being addicted to video games and playing video games more than you read the Bible and pray? Well, Jesus just said it. Paul said it. Watch and pray always. Pray continually. Jesus said, you, you can't pray in the Holy Ghost watching a video game. You can't pray in the Holy Ghost watching the TV. Watching TV screens. You, you can't pray. Listen to me. Listen to me. In the Bacaranda La Busoto, you can't pray and read your Bible on an idle phone. You can't pray and get in the scriptures and know the scriptures on your idle phone. In, in scriptures. In, in screens. It's either screens or the scriptures.
Get over your wireless. Get over your wireless plans and develop a plan to escape the, the, the fires of hell. Down to verse 8. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Listen. Nevertheless, Jesus asked a question. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? And I asked the question, didn't it? When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? When Jesus comes, will he find faith in your hands? Will he find faith in your heart? Will he find faith in your home? Or will he find you watching video games, watching movies, looking at screens, texting, tweeting, typing, transmitting, hooking up, watching porn? What will he find you doing when he comes? What, what are you ready? The Bible said the bride of Christ should be spotless, without blemish, and blameless. The glorious church. Not the carnal church. Verse 44 of Luke 19. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because, listen, this goes with my text, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. In the Old Testament it said, it's for a time such as this. For a time such as this, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, for a time such as this. Jesus berated the people of his day. He said, oh, ye of little faith, how is it that you have no faith? How is it that you don't recognize and realize the time of your visitation? It is the last times. It is the last days of the end times. Jesus is coming again. But what are you doing? Twiddling your thumbs, drinking, doing drugs, smoking 420, doing lines of coke, hooking up, shaking your booty on Twitter, lusting at porn images. Look, stop lusting. Stop lusting. The fires of hell are real. And the smoke of your torment ascends up forever without Jesus Christ. I guess I'm the last hellfire and brimstone preacher. I guess I'm the last Pentecostal preacher of holiness. I guess I'm the last preacher who still believes in eternal everlasting burning hell. But you don't have to go to hell. You don't have to die and go to hell. Instead of the fires of hell, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Instead of the fires of hell, you need the fires and flames of Holy Ghost revival. The moving and the operation of God the Holy Ghost. I hope you don't mind. I take off my jacket. I roll up my sleeves, but I'm not wearing sleeves. I unbutton my shirt. Because it's time to get serious with God. It's time to quit playing games and start getting serious and getting right with God. It's time to know the hour and the time of your visitation. Paul said, knowing the time, knowing the time, we should awake from sin and live in the light. Now, go back in your Bible to where we started in Psalm 17. Somebody said, Brother Mike, this is the strangest Resurrection Day, Good Friday message I've ever heard. And maybe it is. But it's what the Holy Ghost said to preach. Amen. You see, I don't come on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram to be liked, to get friends and followers. I don't come on here to get liked. I come on here to be right. Amen. I don't come on here to be a star. I come to tell you about the only star in this universe, the one who hung the stars and gave everyone a name. Hallelujah. You better forget about being a systems analyst and a web designer and meet the one who hung all the stars, designed the universe, gave every star a name. You better forget about Apple and Amazon and AT&T and Alphabet Google and meet Almighty God and find His amazing grace before it's too late. Psalm 17, you visited me in the night, and he's visiting you right now. A lot of y'all, you just can't hear him because you're too busy with earbuds in your ears, bud. 
you got earbuds in your ears, and so you can't hear God. You got earbuds in your ears, you got a, a Bud Light in your hand, you're lighting up a cigarette. So, so God's right there, but you can't hear him. You can't feel him. Because your electronic noise drowns out the still small voice of God. And you're too busy, like a chatty Kathy, chatting away with your electronic tongue. Your, your fingers that you type and text and tweet and transmit with are the, are the electronic tongue of the digital age. Damning and dooming your soul. On Zoom, zooming your way to everlasting hell, looking and sitting on your laptop and sitting in Lucifer's lap, staring at your idol phones, which are your idol gods, says God. You visited me in the night. I got a few points as I begin to close today. I just want to give you some simple points. Number one, the visitation in our sleep, the visitation in the night. We've already covered that one. You've tried me. You've tried me. And you find nothing. I'm purpose that my mouth, it's important what you say, shall not transgress. Concerning the words of men, the word of thy lips have I kept from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps Slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear to me and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O God, that savest by thy right hand them which put their faith in thee from those who rise up against thee. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. I love that. Keep me under the shadow of thy wings. You need to forget about Apple and Tim Cook. You need to forget about all that. And you need to become the apple of God's eye. Did you hear me? An apple caused the world to fall 6,000 years ago. It's causing the world to fall again. Forget about Apple and Tim Cook and become the apple of God's eye so you don't cook in hell forever with beastly, blasphemous, abominable Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Bible drop. Number two today, the vanity of Satan and sinners. If I see one more ad on TikTok for veneers and dentures and implants and false teeth, I am literally going to vomit, throw up, barf, and all. Listen to me. Vanity is a sin. Quit worrying about how you look and worry about cooking in hell. Self, arrogance, vanity. Quit worrying about how you appear physically and worry about what happens on Judgment Day when you have to appear at the great white throne of Almighty God. From the wicked that oppress me, verse 9, from my daily enemies who compass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. Great swelling words of vanity. That's what the internet is. That's what the app are. That's what the websites are. That's what TV is. Celebrity, actors, activists, authorities. Listen to me, athletes. It's vanity. It's pride. It's self. It's self-promotion. It's vainglory. It's greed. It's sin. The Bible said, humble yourself under the hand of God. Verse 11. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down on the earth like as a lion that is greedy of its prey and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Number three, the viciousness of sin and violence. We see it all around us. We've already covered it in today's message. The viciousness of sin and violence. But then we see, and this is my favorite point of all, point four, the victory of the Savior. Look at verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Lord, from the men of the world which have portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to the babes. Look, the world may be rich, the prosperity of the wicked. How are there so many billionaires and millionaires? 
How are the rich getting richer? The poor getting poorer? The American dream becoming the American nightmare? We don't even know our neighbor to love our neighbor. But look, judgment day is coming and God will make it right and there will finally be justice and judgment in the gate. There will finally be justice and judgment in the gate. It's time. It's time for the coming of Christ and he will make all things equal and he will reward the wicked with the fires and the flames of everlasting eternal hell forever. Point five, we will see the vanquishment of Satan, sin, and sinners. Just hold on a little while longer. It's going to come. You may be suffering now. You may not understand why that sinner is so blessed, but just hold on. Just hold on. Our reward is not on this side. Our reward is on that side. Pearly gates. Pearly gates. Crystal sea. Walls of jasper and streets of gold. The vindication of the saints. That's point six. The vindication of the saints. Verse 15, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Point seven, the vision that satisfies the searching, seeking soul. Hallelujah. What are you seeing? What are you seeking? Are you seeking things and bling and fame? All that's going to burn up in hell. Jesus said, take all that you have. And give it to the poor. Give it to the poor. And come follow me. Because you can't take it with you where you go. Forget about all that. Forget about the mall. Forget about shopping on AOL. Electronic currency. Electronic transactions. Forget about getting another delivery from Amazon. I was in front of my house yesterday. I can't make this up. Big old, big old guy. He was driving a Amazon Prime truck. Big old guy, probably 250 pounds, probably six foot four. And, and I was taking my newspaper to my next door neighbor because he's dog sitting. You can't make this up. And I'm climbing the stairs. He says, Come here. Yeah. When a six foot four, 250 pound Amazon Prime driver says, Come here, you drop what you're doing, you come down. And he had a big, <laughs> he had a big rock in his head. And bam, like Emerald Lagasse, bam, boom, like John Madden. And he was smashing a snake. He said, there's a snake. And I came down there, and I'm not, I, I was expecting to see this big monster rattlesnake. Oh, I mean, the thing couldn't have been that long. <laughs> that thing couldn't have been that long. And he just bamming it, bamming it. Wow, it's a snake. And about decapitated the thing. And he said, well, he said, I did it because mama snake might be around. Well. Anyway, that's just, a, that's just a joke. Sometimes a little humor <laughs> is good. Uh, <laughs> my preaching's so heavy sometimes you have to, you have to kind of bring it down, bring it down to earth. But, you know, the reason I tell funny stories like that is, you know, in my comments, I get death threats all the time. So when you get death threats and you're the most hated, pers persecuted preacher in America, <laughs> you just have to laugh sometime. Amen. Psalm 18, 1, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Do you love God? The Lord is my rock and my fortress. You're talking about a piece of the rock from Prudential. Do you have a piece of the rock, Jesus Christ? You need to forget about Dwayne, the Rock Johnson, and Chris Rock, and Will Smith, uh, and, and, and find the rock of ages. Cleft for me, forget about Will Smith, uh, and find the word of God. Forget about Oscar statues and the Academy Awards and graven images. Uh, hallelujah. And cast down your crowns, and cast down your statues and awards at the feet of Jesus Christ. Forget about Kid Rock. And learn the rock of ages. Forget blue cross and find the true blue cross. I'm going to close today by reminding you a little bit 
about the doctrine of God because the doctrine of God, David knew God and God was personal to David. David wrote these Psalms. He said, I love you, O Lord. He loved God because he knew God. And today I think in, in modern, we're, we're so into computer systems and systems analysis that we forgot systematic theology, the doctrine of God. Oh, that's true. So I'm just going to remind you a little bit, a little refresher course on the five W's of God. And number one, who is God to you? Is God just an abstract, distant concept? He may or may not be there. You're an agnostic. You're an atheist. You don't know. You're a new ager. You're a second humanist. You're in a humanistic psychology. Eh, God's not that important. Who is God to you? Or is he the Lord God, the creator and possessor of heaven and earth? Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God to you? Your relationship with God is the most important thing you will ever deal with. And a hundred years from now, when you're dead, and you will be, your relationship with God will be the only thing that matters. Not how much money you made or how big a house you lived in or how pretty your wife or husband was, what your job was, how much education and knowledge you had. Your carbon score will mean nothing a hundred years from now, but your cross score will mean everything. Number two, what is God to you? What is God to you? Is he a thing? Is he an idea? Is he a concept? Is he a philosophy? Is he a maybe? Or is he a real person? Do you know a little bit about God? Or do you know God for yourself? And number three, where is God to you? Is God just some distant, detached old man sitting on a throne somewhere in heaven? Or is he in your heart? Is, is he with you all the time? Is he your best friend? Is he your father? Is he a friend that sticks closer to a brother? Where is God to you? He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's eternal. He's sovereign. He's divine. He had no beginning. He will have no end. He is the creator of all there is. And your creator. Who? Where? What? Is God to you? And number four, why is God to you? Why does God exist? Why is there a God? Well, the first part of this message, I brought it out. There's a God because there's love. The Bible says God is love. And God created you because he wanted something to love. Hallelujah. And his love is limitless. We can't understand the height or the breadth or the depth or the width of the love of God. It is beyond knowledge. It is beyond the measurement. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. That's what the cross, Good Friday, and the resurrection is all about. And number five, when is God? When is God? He's all the time. With God, time is only a concept. With God, time is only a concept. He's the great I am, not the great I was or the great will be. He's when you need him to be. Look, ladies and gentlemen, and last question, what happens when you die? And when you meet God face to face, God cannot be restrained confined, contained, or, or, or controlled. You can't ghost God. You can't block the Holy Ghost. You can't let God. You can't hold back God. And you can't withhold God the Holy Ghost. Joe Biden won't take my call. But Jesus takes all my calls. If you keep God's word, God will keep you. A visitation in the night a.k.a. synonym, you could also call this message, a victory in the night that's out of sight, a vision in the light. Glory to God. Look at what David said as I close. I'll call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. Psalm 18, 4, the sorrows of death compassed me. That was Good Friday. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed about me. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called on the Lord. And cried to my God, 
and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him. When you face stress, don't distress. Listen, when you face stress, don't distress. Instead of distressing, find the deliverer. Forget another delivery from Amazon Prime and find the deliverer of mankind. When you face stress, don't stress out. Don't distress. De-stress. De-stress. D-E. De-stress. And the only way you do it is by the stress remover who takes away our fear, our anxiety, and I worry, cast, cast, cast all your care on him. First Peter 5, 7. For he cares for you. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God. Even in times of World War III, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard your hearts and minds. Every head bowed, every eye closed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I can think of no better time for men, women, boys, girls, teenagers, adults, seniors, young professionals to get saved. Then on Good Friday, Good Saturday, and Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Weekend. Saying a prayer, a sinner's prayer is not going to save you, but if you truly repent of your sin, ask Jesus in, believe on him, accept him not just as your Savior, but make him the Lord of your life, and confess him publicly, and be baptized in water, and convert. That's what saves. And I'm going to ask you to start that process right now by getting on your knees. Unless you're driving a car. If you're driving a car, please stay safe. And just cry out to God and say, Oh God, I'm a sinner. I admit my sin. I deserve to go to hell and die lost. And I can't save myself. I'm helpless and hopeless. And I repent of my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. Wash me. In the blood of Jesus. And now if God brings specific sins to your heart, just name those sins. Say, God, I did this. God, I did that. Forgive me. Confess it. And turn it over and say, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn around. And now I'm just going to start you in the process. I want to lead you in a prayer. And I want you to pray this, but not just pray it, but believe it with all your heart. Say, dear God in heaven, right now, I'm so sorry for my sin. I turn from sin and idols to you. I repent. And now, Jesus Christ, I want to know you personally. Come into my heart today. Come in to stay. Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. And Jesus, right now, I'll make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I dedicate, consecrate, and commit the rest of my life, every moment of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, of every decade, for the rest of my life, I will serve you. I will confess you publicly. I will be baptized in water. I will witness for you. I will live for you. And, Father, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I felt that. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Praise God. Now find a good local godly church and a, a good local shepherd, believers to fellowship with. The Bible says, avoid not the assembling of ourselves together as we see the coming of the Lord approaching. Follow me, hit plus, and follow me. Watch all my messages. Go back to the beginning of my TikTok. Follow Evangelist Mike Dial on TikTok. Watch all my messages from the beginning. Also, the best thing you can do for shepherdship, for discipleship, for follow-up is to also follow my uncle on TikTok. On TikTok, he's at Daryl Dial Zero. At Daryl Dial Zero. And he is the best shepherd, discipler, and follow-up person that I know of. And he's the one I recommend. Follow 
Daryl Dow, zero. He's got a bunch of books. He can hook you up with his books that are great. We're not selling books. We're just telling you how to, how to serve the Lord and, and to grow in grace and knowledge. Somebody said, Brother Mike, do you take offerings? Yes, you can email me. C-H-A-R-M-I-K-3545 at Outlook.com and find out information on that. And also, we receive offerings through Zelle, through Zelle, 703-405-1942, 703-405-1942. Or you can use my Venmo app, Venmo at Evangelist, capital E, Mike, capitalize M, dial, capitalize dial. Somebody said, do you just preach on TikTok and Facebook and Twitter and and uh, all these places? Or, or do you do meetings in churches? Well, yeah. I accept every invitation I get. I don't have to pray about it. Because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And you're a creature and I'm a preacher. So, yeah, I go. Jesus said, go into all the world. That's what I'm doing. And the way I set up my meetings is you can either email me. C-H-A-R-M-I-K-3545 at Outlook.com. Or you can call or text 24-7, area code 703-405-1942. 703-405-1942. I don't ask for money, offerings, honorariums. I don't have any books or products to sell. I'm just going to come preach at your church, camp meeting, conference, revival, whatever it is, under the big tent, inside. I love brick and mortar. I love hugging your neck, shaking your hands, laying hands on the sick. So pastors, invite me. Church leaders, bishops, elders, deacons, invite me. 703-405-1942. Now, before we leave today, while the anointing is still flowing, and while there's no sin standing between you and God, there's no better time to get healed than right now. So I'm going to pray for the sick and, 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 the, and the, the bound and the hurting and the addicted right now. In the name of Jesus right now, I lay hands on you spiritually. In the name of Jesus right now, I anoint you with oil spiritually. In the name, there it is. Oh, hallelujah. We don't have to wait. There's the river of God. He kanabuku ekoriandere manti. God says, my river. Here's the interpretation. God says, my river of healing and deliverance is flowing. God says, just jump in the river. Jump in the river. Jump in the river of healing and deliverance. And cancer is being healed. And COVID is being healed. And diabetes and hypertension and heart disease. And brain disease. And HIV AIDS and Alzheimer's dementia and every other matter of sickness uh, be healed receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and if there be familiar spirits religious spirits spirits of infirmity spirits of fear in Jesus name I take authority of you I plead the blood of Jesus and I cast you out to come out of the people be free be free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh I feel that the Lord says right now, just lift your hands. Thank you. It's already been done. Thank him. Say, Lord, I believe that I receive my healing. Lord, I believe I receive my deliverance. It's mine. I am healed according to the word of God. I, no matter what my physical sight says, I am healed in Jesus' name according to the word of God. By his stripes, I am healed. Thank God. He is our healer. Woo! It's still flowing. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy God. is baptizing people in the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands and receive it right now. And don't talk anymore in English. Don't talk anymore in your native language. But speak the syllables and the sounds that he's given you. Open up your mouth. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Raise your hands and pray in the Spirit. Handele kitala bushato okoriandala manti. Pentecostal revival is sweeping America. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm so glad you're with me today. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. God bless you. I love you. Remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen. Happy Good Friday. Happy Resurrection Day from Evangelist Mike Dial. And remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.